Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is quite simply one of the outstanding actors here in Germany. And here he is, Ulrich Mattes. Hello. Hi. Thank Hi. you very much for joining us today on Talking Germany. I am very thrilled to have you here. Yeah? It's very exciting for Thank me. Thank you. Cool. We'll be talking very shortly. Now, Ulrich Mattis became familiar to an international audience with his chilling and utterly compelling performance in the role of Goebbels in the 2004 movie Downfall, portraying the last days of Hitler and the Third Reich. But for many here in Berlin, he's even better known for his many roles, especially at the prestigious Deutsches Theater, as a stage actor. And I'm sure it's going to be fascinating to hear today what he has to say about his own career and the following topics. Student protest. We find out how young would-be actors from Germany's leading dramatic arts academy had to go up in arms to win a long battle over new premises. Never forgetting the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin, a powerful symbol for terrible suffering. But what's the best way to explain what happened under the Nazis to young men and women? And Quest for Glory, Germany's team of around 380 athletes is all geared up for the London Olympics and our guest is a keen sports fan who can hardly wait for the Games to get underway. <laughs> I'm looking forward to talking to you about sports. I'm a big sports fan myself. But um, let's begin with it. You're a very unusual man. Am I? You in, are. In, in, in <laughs> which way? <laughs> Because we are sitting here in Berlin. Yes. And you were born in Berlin. Yes. That's unusual in Berlin these right, days. Right, right. Yeah. I'm a born West Berliner. A West Berliner. Actually. And um, I was always, when I, when I haven't been in, in Berlin, I was in uh, Dusseldorf, for uh, two years, I was in Munich for seven years, and I was terribly homesick. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I, the landscape, I was, I, re, I was homesick of everything. The, the, the humor of the people, which is kind of special, as you probably Abs know. Absolutely. And, <laughs> <laughs> and this, this, this kind of uh, very flat landscape with furs, uh, and so, and I, I, waited for, for the moment coming back to Berlin since 1992. I'm still uh, back in Berlin and I'm really happy. I won't leave the town uh, anymore until I'm, uh, I, I don't know. No, probably I stay you're, here. You're here to stay. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, I'm not giving much away when I tell the world that you are five decades old. Yeah. How yeah. has Berlin, you were born here, how yeah. has Berlin changed in that time, in your oh, lifetime? God. Oh This my God, is, yeah. Yeah, well, well. Big time. Of course. I mean, 89, the war came down. Uh, I was in Munich at that time. I was very sad being in, because everything really changed. Um, it's still a, a, a city in, in, in constant progress. Uh, um, I think it's, it's good to be here now because it's, um, it's a city which always defines itself new in a way. The cultural scene, of course, it's very lively. The rents are still quite low. So um, sometimes I think, wow, it's so big. I, I just can't, I, 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 uh, I mean, there's so many theaters, the Berlin Philharmonic, the opera houses, galleries everywhere. Sometimes I, at six o'clock when I don't have to play in my theater, I think to myself, well, I could, do, I, I could go to so many places, I stay at home and read a book <laughs> or meet friends or so, because the possibilities are so infinite. Uh -huh. uh, well, I mean, of course I love it, but um, in a way, I, uh, friends of mine, they, they uh, want to leave now, Berlin, because for them it's too big, for them it's too hectical, for the, they, they go to Zurich. It's not the village and, uh, that it once was, uh, is no, it? No, definitely not. Yeah. And uh, there are many Kiezes, many small neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and sometimes people tend to stick to their neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, sometimes I do myself, I live in Charlottenburg, which is a, the center of West Berlin, old West Berlin, and um, yeah, I love it to be in Berlin, but it's um, sometimes I think it's quite uh, demanding living in Berlin. It's, okay, okay. it's uh, anstrengend. You've given us a wonderful feeling for Berlin today, what it feels like, very lively city. Tell me this, why did you become an actor in the first place? We're going to be talking about you as the actor. To stay a child, in a way. To stay... Um, <laughs> um, 
Of course, I'm an adult now, as you say, <laughs> as you're very, not very charming. You, you mentioned my age indirectly. So, um, and I think um, I love to, to, to um, live with my intuition. Mm. Of course, I'm, I'm, I think quite a lot and I'm, uh, yeah. But on the other hand, I have, um, uh, I, I, I love to deal with my impulses mm. and um, going to rehearsals, to rehearsals um, is to, to, in a way, to, to stay a, a child because you have to, to, uh, 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 This, this is something which I'd rather like to stay in German, but I, I give my <laughs> go best. On, go and then, uh, no, 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 I stay in English. Um, um, or, or, no. no, no, come on, in English, in English. <laughs> out, out with it, out You're with like it. a teacher <laughs> with me now. <laughs> <laughs> no. One second, I'm going to give you a moment to think about this yes, thought. We'll please. move on, we'll get the portrait. It was very interesting, you just, you, when you were talking about your own acting... You pointed to your stomach one time. Of you course. pointed to your head one time. That's very interesting. Yeah, Ulrich Mattis has just been sitting here going like that, banging his fists together and talking about a lifelong battle. Yes. Tell us more. Between, <laughs> <laughs> between intuition yep. and intellect. Yep. And this is what makes, I think, life interesting. And uh, my my profession demanding mm -hmm. because it's of co of course it's both. If you play Hamlet or big other parts, Uncle Vanya, which both parts I have played already, um, or Vanya, I'm still playing. Um, uh, you can't uh, uh, play a part like this uh, of this uh, like a demanding part like this. Uh, uh, not only with intuition, but not only with intellect. So you have to, to deal, you have to combine these two parts of uh, human possibilities and uh, you have to uh, deal with both of them. Mm, you just mentioned Shakespeare there. You were talking about Hamlet. Shakespeare, of course, was somebody who wrote about nature or nurture. Where does it come from that somebody has a lot of talent? Yeah? Is it hard work or are they born with it? Both. Are you a natural oh. actor? No. Yes, no. As a child, I was very, uh, I, I was like um, all the relatives, my parents, they all said he has to become an actor uh -huh. because I love to produce myself. I love to make uh, whatever games I, I uh, dressed up and I did everything to make people laugh. And so I think it's, it's both. Um, Marlene Dietrich, uh, when I'm right, uh, uh, she said that 90% of her career were hard work mm -hmm. and discipline. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I mean, it was a kind of a joke, but uh, not only. I think she, she's right to some degree. Um, it's, of course, it's, it's imagination and talent, being musical um, and so. But on the other hand, it's, it's hard work. It's discipline. It's... Um, At the moment, I'm rehearsing Oedipus, yeah. and I'm really, I'm sitting for hours and thinking about um, what to do with the text, what to do physically, how to uh, get expression. And then, then I go to, to the rehearsal, and then I think it should be pure intuition. You should really put your intellect... Uh, At home. You, you, you should leave it at home. It's interesting because we're going to talk a little bit about sports later, but sport is, is, is very similar, that you, you train and you practice and you train, you have lots and lots of discipline, mm -hmm. but on the day... You just have to do it. Exactly that. Yeah. yeah. You do film, you do theatre. Which do you prefer? Are they different worlds? They are different worlds, kind of, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in front of a camera, you have to reduce your, your, your means very much. You, it's just... Uh, I, You just have to think a thought or you have to feel a feeling and the camera will notice. Uh, in this big empty space, which uh, a stage is, you just, you, you have to uh, find uh, some technique to, uh, acoustically to get in the 28th row or mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you have to, to have a much more... Uh, Yeah, you have to have, you have to be aware of the of the space, uh, whereas the camera uh, it follows in English uh, some English problems again. Right, don't worry. Okay. okay. Um, on the other hand, um, 
What was your your question? But sir, let's, let, 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 I'm, uh, enough on the film and the theatre. I just want to move. Oh, if go on. I had no, to go decide, on. Yeah. if I had to decide, um, I would change. Uh, I would choose uh, theatre uh. because um, being together with an audience, being together with the energy of an audience for three hours or so, gives you so much energy back. The concentration, the silence of an audience is so hot. Do you look into people's eyes? No. The audience? Have never. you looked into my eyes while I've been watching you on stage? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 never. You never do that? No. It's a, most of the time it's a black hole. Mm. You just hear, you just feel the, the, the energy which comes from, from the audience. And can you sense whether that is positive or negative energy? Kind of, yes, yeah. yes. Uh. And I deal with it. Mm. I, I, I have my antennas like this. Yeah. And um, if I have the feeling that the, that the audience is kind of unconcentrated, I change immediately my, my play, immediately. Uh -huh. I make longer pauses, I'm, I'm getting more silent, or uh, I don't know. Yeah. I change. I want to play with the audience. Uh -huh. I, it's, it's a partner. It's uh -huh. a third partner. I have my partners on stage and... I have my partner in the audience, so um, I think most of the time I think concentration, being a, a really a silent audience is much more uh, reward mm -hmm. than the applause in the end. Mm -hmm. An awful lot of the theatre I've seen in Germany in the last 20 years, and longer than that really, has been what they call here in Germany Regie Theater. It's been director's <laughs> theatre. It's been about some guy with a big brain saying, I'm going to rewrite Shakespeare. Are you happy with that? Well, ah, ah, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> of, uh, of, uh, I wouldn't generalize it. I wouldn't generalize it. Of course, there are some uh, excesses of uh, the so called Regie Theater. I wouldn't uh, uh, piss into some corner on stage. I wouldn't do this. Which I've is the kind that. of thing that happens. I've seen yeah. that, yeah. You're in blood, like mud. Yes, I mean, <laughs> I don't care. If, if, some, if, if a production does something with me, then it's good. And this production can be totally conventional mm -hmm. and it can be, ooh, yeah. regie theater. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't like this kind of generalization. The, the Germans, I, you know, <laughs> I, I remember one, one situation in London uh, in front of the National Theatre. Uh, Jeremy Irons was yeah. there sitting with his wife and I passed by and I thought, well, this is Jeremy Irons. And I went to him and I said, we have something in common. We both <laughs> worked with Volker Schlöndorf. Oh, yeah, the and filmmaker. Said, oh, yeah. the, the director. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I play tonight. Do you want to come? I get you a ticket and afterwards you come to my dressing room and we talk. Mm -hmm. I did. And we talked afterwards um, in his dressing room with champagne and everything for two hours uh, about Regie Theater. And he said he's seen some productions uh, in Germany which he disliked so much. And I said to him, but Mr. Irons, I've seen some productions in London which I found totally boring mm -hmm. because it was just the actor, the brilliant actor, mm -hmm. but the director seemed to be, I don't know, vanishing almost. Non-existent. Non, Non-existent in a way. And maybe I'm also, I'm already trained so much to this German Regie Theater <laughs> that I want a, a kind of a... a you want a, you want a big bang. <laughs> no, no, not a big bang. An idea. I, but an idea to mm. the... Uh, and I've seen Shakespeare productions in London, which it was just the, the language and a wonderful actor, mm -hmm. which to a certain degree, of course, it's, it's wonderful. But I was, I, I missed the, the handwriting. <laughs> okay. <You know? laughs> Fascinating stuff. Good drama school. Very good. Happy end. I hope so. I'm, I'm, Me too. I'm quite optimistic. We're confident, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. What, what, when you say it's a good drama school, yeah, tell me how, what, what you mean with that. Because, I mean, people out there in the big wide world, a lot of them won't have heard of the, uh, the Ernst Busch Academy, but it mean, is, it's a fantastic uh, place. Craft, the, 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 the skills of yeah. acting mm -hmm. are taught there on a, on a very high level. Mm -hmm. um, the professors are very good. I 
taught them myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. I, well, no, what did you teach? Do you still teach there or you did teach there? I did teach mm -hmm. there, yeah, and I will be mm -hmm. teaching somewhere, or I don't know, some when, Good some you. time. Yeah. Um, no, well, uh, scenes from, from dramas. I, I did, uh, I don't know, I've forgotten actually. I, Shakespeare, I don't, Chekhov, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with two students or one student, a monologue. Uh, so like a master um, class kind of a thing, more kind or, of, or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And when, you, when, you, when you're out and about, when you, when, you're, when you get involved in a new production, there might be actors or actresses there who you haven't worked with before. Do you sometimes notice that that person is a product of the Ernst Busch no, Academy? No, it, do, it doesn't no, go that far. No, 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 mm. no, no, really no. There are some other very good uh, schools in, in Germany, the Munich, the Falkenberg Schule, or in, in well, the, the, it's a very good school. And politicians always say education is so important and we have this very, very high class institute. And so I really wanted to, to protest with them mm. because there were only two millions missing for this new uh, building. And the old buildings are all over Berlin and in a very, in a really, in a rotten, totally rotten state. Yeah. And... Uh, um, the Senate was uh, really pro this this new building. Mm, the local and government. So yeah. it, it was stupid not to to give these two million. So I really protested, and I think we're succeeded. And it's interesting. You went out and protested. The students went out and protested, and they won the day. It's often said in Germany these days by people of your age and my age, and a little bit older still. Yeah, uh, that the, the the young generation they're sort of they're unpolitical. No, they aren't. I mean. Of course, there are some, some are unpolitical, but, uh, well, as you uh, probably have this, the, the made, the, make the same experience, um, the pirates, this, these new uh, political new party. New party, 10% of the vote in Germany, more or less, yeah. yeah? I wouldn't vote for them, actually, uh, to be honest. Uh -huh. But um, I think it's interesting because there seem to be a kind of a atmosphere where more people want to get a bit more involved into politics mm -hmm. um, and this party, this new party of the pirates are a kind of an expression for this, for this need of the people. Not to make the cross but to be via internet and liquid, so-called liquid democracy. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'm quite curious what happens to, to, to this party. Okay. Maybe they grow. They it's interesting. Grow. Would you describe yourself as a as, as a political person? Very much. Very much. Very much. From yeah. like this. Your father was a well-known journalist. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was. Yeah. You, some, you sometimes uh, I've I've heard you say that you sometimes think, oh, I would like to have been a journalist. Yeah. No, I no? never did. I never, never did. wanted to become. Oh, a journalist. Oh, that's a pity because I was thinking you and I could trade for an evening. You could come along here and be a journalist or read the news or well, something. I'd like, I'd like I could, to. I could go up on stage yes, and do. Once? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> do well. check off. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, while we're talking about you as a political person, yeah. one thing I would like to ask you is, uh, in recent years, as a political journalist, I've spent an awful lot of time up close watching Angela Merkel. Yeah, And people around Europe these days are fascinated to know what Angela Merkel is really like. She's very like. funny. Yeah, because you've met her. Yeah? I've met her at a <laughs> you've had dinner with garden her. party. A garden party. <laughs> yeah, a garden party. <laughs> sounds, sounds very British, but was German in Berlin. Yeah. Um, and she was very, very funny, really. Very self-ironic, very... Uh, really witty, very fast, very schlagfertig. I don't know the, the English yeah, word. Yeah, she was quick-witted. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, she, she made a parody of uh, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy and Putin. Really? And so of her colleagues. Yes, she was very, very different from, from this image uh, <laughs> as a kind of, you are very... Um, uh, no, I liked her a lot. She was mm -hmm. very sympathetic, very likable, funny, really very funny, very direct. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't vote for her, mm -hmm. on the other hand, but I liked her. Okay. And I still do. Um... There's one subject we've got to talk about, and we are going to talk about. It's the it's your film role uh, as uh, Josef Goebbels, mm -hmm. yeah. Which was hard, hard. It was to, hard, to do. yeah. Because Let's normally be... I want I want to defend the roles I play, yeah. Uh, because I don't like uh, when an audience too quickly has an opinion about uh, about the, the 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 guys I play. And people absolutely but, do with Josef um, Goebbels. They know where they of stand. Of course, yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. and I have. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's nothing to defend with mm -hmm. Josef Goebbels. But if you, when, when you play a part, 
you uh, kind of, kind of identify, you have to identify, especially in front of a camera, which is really, which sees everything. So you, which was hard, but um, it was very interesting because I had to prepare two parts, uh, Goebbels and one of his victims, mm -hmm. a priest in, uh, uh, in the con concentration camp of Dachau. Yeah, we saw this in, this in the report in, earlier. In this this film, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was only one week uh, between these, uh, 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 these shooting, two productions. Yeah. These mm -hmm. two productions. So I had to, to prepare both. And I read Goebbels' diaries and I read uh, uh, diaries of, or, or, or documents or, or prose of um, people who survived Auschwitz or other Buchenwald or other concentration camps, mm -hmm. which was very, very, uh, of course, uh, highly intensive to, to, to have, I don't know, 10 months of, of dealing with, with this, this period of, mm -hmm. of German history. Okay, you talk, Ulrich, uh, Ulrich um, is talking about uh, the, uh, the, this terrible chapter in German history, the Nazi period. And one question that is, that is being increasingly asked is the people who were actually there, the victims and the perpetrators, uh, are now, that's an ever-decreasing number. One question that's being asked is how you explain that terrible phase of German history to young Germans, young men, young women. The Holocaust Memorial in Berlin part of what Germany calls the culture of remembrance it's been nurturing for 67 years. How do we deal with the Nazi era now that the last surviving perpetrators and victims will soon be gone? Guilt can't be inherited, but many later generations feel it can. Charlotte Knobloch, former president of the Central Council of Jews in Germany, says feelings of guilt make it hard to convey knowledge about the past successfully. Time and again, young people have to acknowledge that they're the ones who've burdened themselves with guilt because their forebears are no longer there. And that's the biggest mistake we could possibly make, one we must absolutely avoid in the present and should avoid in the future. In German schools, the Nazi era is presented as more than just a dreadful part of German history. A certain amount of remorse is demanded of a generation that had nothing to do with it. Daniel Bernson is a history teacher. He knows that the old moralizing methods are outdated, but still haven't completely disappeared. For a long time, teachers focus closely on the victims and it was desirable for pupils to identify with the victims. That's a strong component of this teaching method, which demands remorse. Nowadays, I'd say a broader view should be taken, that the onlookers, hangers-on and perpetrators also have to be examined, and that everything that took place around the Holocaust needs more attention. And that's not yet in all the school books or every syllabus, but the concepts behind it are certainly there. Teachers know this megalomaniac era is still very interesting for German students. But members of the third generation after Hitler no longer want to be told pointedly that mass mania and mass murder are bad. That's self-evident to them. Harold Welzer is a social psychologist. He's written a book about Germany's ways of remembering the past which includes calling on young people not to become Nazis. He says that just bores them. They're all completely opposed to Nazism. In that sense, this approach to remembrance in history has achieved its aim. But now there's a problem. If we always use the same rhetoric and say, we must not forget, this must never happen again, and address that to people who haven't the slightest interest in forgetting it and would like to do everything to make sure it doesn't happen again, why should we keep telling them they mustn't and they must? und ihr müsst und so weiter und so weiter. The ritualized approach to 20th century German history is reaching its limits because soon none of the guilty will be alive. Who can the victims then accuse? It seems it may be time for a culture of remembrance that's free of accusations. It's interesting, yesterday with two of my colleagues here, 
uh, two of my German colleagues. I watched that report pre preparing for the show and each of them said at their schools when they were youngsters, they had the feelings that what the teachers were trying to do was to ensure that they had a bad conscience. Is that how you remember it no. from your school no, days here in all. Germany? No, no yeah? not at all. What happened with you? Um, it was always um, the, 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 the word responsibility was the, the, the main word, the, the trigger word uh, in my family, mm -hmm. with my parents, in conversations with them and at school. Guilt? No, but responsibility, which I, I, I still think is, um, is very good to mm -hmm. deal with uh, pupils. Um, uh, when I had my A-level, we went to Israel, which mm -hmm. was a very, very good experience for me. We worked in a kibbutz. Mm -hmm. That was part of your school program. Yeah, we yeah. could choose, mm -hmm. actually, as pupils, between Greece, going to the shore, yeah. and the sun. These ancient sites, and the uh, sun. <laughs> yeah, both. Beach, uh, uh -huh. life, and uh, the ancient sites, Delphi and so. Or going to Israel, working in the kibbutz two weeks, and going around for two weeks. And I decided to go to Israel, which most of uh, my colleagues did. And um, for instance, I remember I, we, we came, uh, a friend of mine and me, we came to an old uh, um, couple and she never had talked German. With them, yes, uh, just the two of them, but not with Germans, never. Mm -hmm. And after the war, it was 77, um, and the, 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 the husband came to us and said, please come down with a cellar in English. And then he played the beginning of the Moonshine Sonata uh, of Beethoven. Mm -hmm. and, she, and then he, I, I never will forget this. And he turned around to, to us and said in German, das ist auch Deutsch, nicht nur die Nazis. This is also German, not only the Nazis. And then he went upstairs, he, was, he had wet eyes, and he told his wife, uh, now we speak German with them. And we, we finished the evening in German. And this was so moving. They were, had both been in Auschwitz, they survived. Mm -hmm. And when you are 18, it, I mean, if you have a heart, then it does something with you for your whole life. Mm -hmm. This and what did it? Well, tell me, what, what, what did it do? Because okay, obviously it's, a, it's, a, it's an unbelievably um, moving experience. I mean, it, it strengthens your responsibility that mm. this will never happen again, this quoted and quoted and quoted sentence, but it, it's filled with emotion. It's filled mm. with, with something from the presence and not only from the past. You know, and um, my, my, my feeling of um, a, a connection, I don't know yeah. how to say it in English, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, towards Israel, since then is really highly developed. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we have to think about the, the policy of Netanyahu, which apparently isn't uh, good. And uh, of course, the Palestinians have to have a, a state for themselves, but... On the other hand, um, my feelings towards Israel will always be, uh, in a way, connected. I, I, I can't get out of it anymore mm -hmm. because uh, for the last, uh, I don't know, 35 years, um, I've, I've thought about this, this Nazi period. Uh, I've read books and seen documentaries and so on. And of course, I played roles. And this is, this is interesting because we are talking, in the report, we're talking about how you get the message across about what, how, how you get young people to think constructively about what happened during the Nazi period. And certainly the, uh, the, the, your movie, the movie that you played Goebbels in, Downfall, that was, it was a very, very good example of a movie, I think, that was both, it had real dramatic tension and what have you. It's a very fascinating movie to watch, mm -hmm. but it also invites you and young people too, to think yeah. about what you're seeing. Because they, they, they weren't monsters, the Nazi. Hitler 
They weren't well, they for were most people, human for, beings. For most people in the world, they, they have always been. We, we've yes, always said they, they, they were monsters. aliens. They were, they they, were evil. They, 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 they didn't come from Mars. They were among us. They had a childhood. They had children. Uh, 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 Goebbels uh, killed them together with his wife just for ideology reasons. Um, so they were people in a way like you and me. And of course, in every human being, there are uh, parts which are totally full of empathy and full of uh, humanism, but they, uh, there are some other parts, some dark sides in uh, the human potential uh, which are evil, which are evil. And we, we have to deal with every possibilities which uh, are in the human uh, being. That's, well, of course, this makes my profession very interesting because I kind of deal with all of them, all, the, all these potentials, the good mm -hmm. and the evil ones. Mm -hmm. So. Wise words, wise thoughts. Two. Well, it, <laughs> no, go ahead. Two, is it two? Well, I, don't, <laughs> I will do this. Then it's He's not so wise, okay? Very, no, it, it, this is it. This is, it's, these are very important thoughts. Yeah, very important thoughts. We are, however, going to change the tone now. We're going to, um, we're going to talk about something very different. We're going to talk about, we've mentioned it already that we would be doing. The Summer Olympic Games begin in London on the 27th of July, and I, for one, am very excited, as is Ulrich Matters. Before we talk about sport, let's get a feel for how the German athletes are shaping up. Members of Team Germany attending a promotional shoot for the London Olympics. About 380 German sportsmen and women will be there. Cyclist Maximilian Levy will be among them. I'll be 25 years old and at the peak of my performance. I hope everything goes well. A few of them have experience of what it's like on the winner's podium. Lena Schöneborn won gold in the modern pentathlon at the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympics. Riding, running, shooting, swimming and fencing. She trains every day. I've been doing some special preparation for the Olympics, such as phasing out studying and fine-tuning. My mental preparation for training is much like that for competition. I try to recall what I've done in training. If I can achieve my best performance in each individual discipline, I'm happy with my overall results. Lena Schöneborn studies marketing management in Berlin. Along with other athletes, she receives financial support from the organization Deutsche Sporthilfe in the form of 1,500 euros every month. That provides her with the financial independence she needs to train. After all, she is aiming for a repeat performance of her result in 2008. German athletes won 41 medals in Beijing, placing them fifth in the overall medals table. And when the games in London are over, the least they want to achieve is the same result, or hopefully even better. You're a big sports fan. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Track and field. No, 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 no but, but, but where does it come from, the sports thing? In, yeah? Well, I did a long jump and high jump myself. You did long jump and high jump yes, yourself? Yes, uh, yeah? really, yeah. Uh -huh. Quite, no, not very successful, but I loved it. But you didn't do the triple jump. I always liked the triple jump. It looks so funny. Uh, yeah, but uh, it wouldn't. I think it would have ruined my ankles. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> <laughs> both of them, because I I only jumped with my left foot when I did high jump and long jump. Mm -hmm. Fosbury flop, you know. You did the Fosbury flop. Yes, very quite. I loved it. Yeah, my whole my my whole puberty was high jump and long <laughs> jump. So I was very, uh, not, not very um, anstrengend for my parents because I was always... Uh, you gave them no trouble because you were out no, and because about. because I yeah. always yeah. was uh, high jumping and long jumping, <laughs> right. which for parents is a kind of... Uh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Problem solved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a completely uh, a new side to the actor, yeah? Ulrich Mattis, <laughs> the, the high jumper and long jumper, yeah? Yes. yeah. Um, and you, the Fosbury flop, the Mind boggles, yeah? Um, banned substances. You say you're, you're, you're a fan of track and field, but the, these people are all using banned substances. Say some journalists. Yeah, of course, they probably yeah. some do, yeah. I think Usain Bolt 
probably. Mm. Uh, there, there were, we're, no, no, no. Yeah, no I'm quite. Uh, yeah. We can't. We can't do that to you, Saint Paul. We don't know, do we? No, of course we don't know. Yeah. No, but um, I think half of them are doped. That uh, reduces my enthusiasm a, a bit. A wee little bit. Thirty years ago, uh, yeah, I was much more. I, I mean, I was younger too, but um, not so many athletes okay. were doped. From sports to playfulness, yes. talking Germany quiz. If your mobile phone were to ring now with a really exciting offer, would you prefer film or theatre? Film. Film. Is theatre, are, are you a traditionalist or a modernist? A mixture, a good mixture of both. A good mixture of both. Um, Shakespeare or Chekhov? Oh. Uh, that's the big one, isn't it? <laughs> well, Shakespeare and just right behind Chekhov. Okay, okay. But Shakespeare. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> That's your lot with Ulrich Matus, the thinking actor and a great guest. If you've enjoyed his company as much as I have, then do come back next week. Until then, bye-bye and tschüss. <laughs>